the Public News Service Daily Newscast, December the 8th, 2023. I'm Mike Clifford. Agriculture accounts for more than 10% of greenhouse gas emissions in the U.S. Small farm advocates in South Dakota hope the next farm bill curbs spending for industrial operations that are linked to those emissions. Like many sectors, ag is under pressure to reduce its carbon footprint. Congress recently punted reauthorization of the Farm Bill, which maps out spending for many farm and food aid programs to 2024. Erin Johnson, an organic producer in South Dakota, hopes when lawmakers ramp up the debate, they take a closer look at conservation funding and where the money has been flowing. Nationwide, I see some abuse with the EQIP program and these biodigesters. He's referring to the Environmental Quality Incentives Program, which funds biodigesters. They capture methane from manure at factory farms, converting it to energy sources. The National Sustainable Agriculture Coalition says it's the most expensive program practice and does more harm than good. But large operators contend they're responding to the demand for safely grown meat and are always working to modernize environmental practices. I'm Mike Moen. Now from NBC News, a Texas judge Thursday granted an emergency order allowing a pregnant woman whose fetus has a fatal diagnosis to get an abortion in the state. Late last month, Kate Cox, a 31-year-old Dallas-area mother of two who is about 20 weeks pregnant, found out that her developing fetus has a rare chromosomal disorder likely to cause stillbirth or death. Cox told NBC News Thursday she was hopeful and grateful after the judge's decision. Now to Nevada, where a federal judge has dealt three tribal nations a legal setback in their efforts to stop what could be the construction of the country's largest lithium mine. Judge Miranda Dew has granted the tribes the ability to amend their complaint against the Bureau of Land Management, which they claim fast-tracked the project to meet growing demand for lithium. The Department of the Interior is hosting its 2023 White House Tribal Nations Summit in Washington this week, focusing on strengthening nation-to-nation relationships and protecting tribal homelands in an era of climate change. Jimmy John Thompson with the Timbisha Shoshone Tribe says Nevada is being overrun by clean energy projects and argues tribal communities will be left behind. And uh, some of it's even being funded by the federal government. None of the funding is going to the tribes. And we also feel like we are going to be ones facing the biggest impact there. Uh, the entire state is just being overrun by uh, folks from Canada and South America looking at lithium mines and everything else, including nuclear. President Joe Biden contends his administration has made what he calls record investments for tribal nations, but also acknowledges there is more to do. I'm Alex Gonzalez reporting. This is Public News Service. While many lawmakers and environmental groups strive to lower vehicle emissions and the nation's carbon footprint, many truckers see unrealistic time frames for the new EPA rules for heavy-duty truck emissions. Some believe the EPA's push is an attempt to force people into buying electric vehicles despite the cost and lack of national charging infrastructure for commercial vehicles. John Bozell says his nonprofit CalStart has come up with a roadmap to achieving this network. Bozell says the nation needs to move faster to make an impact on climate change. In the future, we can see a society where we have trucks rolling around with zero emission and zero noise. The truck drivers being much happier driving an electric truck and benefiting communities that have been hard hit by diesel pollution and emission. Bozell says today's fleets are exposed to the volatility of the global oil markets, but that would change if they're powered by hydrogen or electricity. He adds the Biden administration has an opportunity to make progress in supporting communities that have been disproportionately affected. Farah Siddiqui reporting. And two reports from the insurance commissioner's office and the state of attorney general reveal an analysis of what they call the true cost of health care in Washington. Health care costs nationwide have been on the rise. The Institute's Sam Hattenbeeler says the AG's report shows costs in Washington state outpace the national average. What she describes as insufficient regulation has led to more consolidation of health care providers and much higher prices for patients. We are seeing that they're able to monopolize the market and charge higher and higher prices. Patients, labor, business, we're saying enough is enough. The bottom line is that Washington consumers are being priced out of the health care that we need. The Institute has launched a Fair Health Prices campaign to educate consumers and prompt state lawmakers to take action. I'm Mark Moran. 
Finally, from our Edwin J. Vieira, Connecticut lawmakers are reluctant to approve new emission standards. The new standards would require 90% cleaner emissions from internal combustion engines. They would also require car makers to deliver 100% zero emission vehicles, including plug-in hybrids, by 2035. But clean air advocates say misinformation about how these standards would impact residents is making it difficult to get them passed. The Connecticut League of Conservation Voters' Lori Brown says most people think it's a ban on gas-powered cars when it's not. You will be able to drive a gas vehicle for the rest of your life or have to think about an EV if you don't want to. What this requires is that any new vehicle in 2035, and this would all be phased in, all new vehicles must be clean emissions. This is Mike Clifford. Thank you for wrapping up your week with Public News Service. Member and listener supported. Hear us on interesting radio stations on your favorite podcast platform. Find our trust indicators at publicnewsservice.org.